The Ecamm Live version 3.9 Beta 2 has just been released, so uh, I'm going to tell you all about it in this video. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and it doesn't seem like that long ago. In fact, it was only just over two weeks, I think, that I did my last video on the previous beta, beta one, uh, and here we are again <laughs> with some more great new features. So let's dig straight on into them, shall we? So here we are with the uh, release notes, and this is uh, just to be clear, we are on version 3.9.0 beta 2, and I've got a feeling we're pretty close to the actual final release version here. So uh, if you are not using the beta and you're still on the uh, the actual release version, then uh, these features will be uh, coming your way fairly soon, I would imagine. Um, but if you're not on, if you are on the beta program rather, then uh, definitely go and check for updates and just make sure you have got this latest version because there are some great new features in it. And we'll start with the top three, which are all related to uh, interview mode. And these are some features which have been uh, requested, I know, quite regularly by many different people and so I think there's going to be a lot of happy people around today when they see what is now possible. So let me come into my demo mode and uh, here we've got our interview window and in our interview window we've now uh, got a little bit of a change around in terms of the way things have been up till till now because before in the preferences on the uh, whoops a daisy <laughs> wrong button uh, up until now the uh, the main ecam live preferences that you access by pressing this little cogwheel here it had the interview mode section within there and indeed it still does but you'll notice that there are uh, not quite so many little options in here and that's because some of these have now been relocated over to the actual interview mode window itself and what you can see is down at the bottom we've now got this extra little cogwheel here and so you can click on this and this will bring up this extra little panel. Now what this allows you to do is, uh, well a few things actually, uh, there's some new things in here and some of those old uh, actions that were previously in the main preferences have been relocated. So let's start at the top. The first one is you can add a page title and this is basically a page title on the browser window uh, window of the person that you send the interview link to. So for those not familiar with how interview mode works basically you have a unique little link and you send that to who you want to be your guest uh, and then they open that in their browser and then they can uh, log in to the, uh, the, the call or dial in or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, up until now, that window had said Ecamm Live on it, whereas now you can actually define uh, the, your own page title. So it's going towards actually being able to brand it, basically, uh, to be more in line with uh, your program or whatever it is you happen to be doing. Next is there is uh, also similarly uh, before there was an Ecamm Live logo at the bottom of the uh, screen for the guest. Uh, well now you can add your own logo and in fact they've got two different options so you can have a variant for light mode or if they're in dark mode you've got a little option for that as well. The next little bit of uh, branding that you can now add in is basically an image for when you send out the link to people. So if you send it in messages, for example, then normally it will go and grab a, uh, a snapshot of the link so that it will put that in as a little uh, sort of thumbnail of the link. Uh, well, now you can add a custom image in and that is what will appear when you send the link to people. So uh, the next thing is the actual guest link domain. So previously it was uh, just guest.ecamlive, uh, sorry, guest.ecamm.live slash and then your little code. Uh, now I know a lot of people, me included, would actually use a custom domain and sort of remap it. So I had, for example, takeonetech.live slash join was my join link, but it was basically just uh, redirecting to this link here. Well, if you don't have a domain or you don't want to go through that uh, uh, hassle <laughs> of setting that all up, what they actually do now is they give you an option of different uh, domains to use. Uh, they all work, they just redirect themselves and uh, basically Ecamm are just dealing with all the redirection. So here you've got a number of different choices. So if you don't want guest.ecamm live, you can use something like click to join.us, click to join.live, uh, call my.show, call me now.tv, and so on. So there's about uh, 14 or 15 different options. Uh, options that you can use there. In fact, I can be uh, precise, <laughs> 14. <laughs> there are 14 different options of domains and actually any of them will work. So, uh, but you can just select the one that it's going to uh, give you out when you uh, copy the link. 
The next thing we've got here is uh, we've got a few of these are moved over from the exist the old uh, preferences location. So for example, default to dark mode. So that is whether the uh, browser of your guest will be on dark mode or light mode by default. And you can set it to default to dark mode. And the reason why you might want that is so that you don't get glare from a big bright white screen in front of your uh, guest on their monitor. Uh, so that is why you might want to have that toggled on. Next, you can have a show viewer comments for your guests so that they will actually see what is the, the stream of comments basically on your, your live stream. Also show view account, so you can have that toggled on. Uh, and the next one down at the bottom here is turn off audio processing for guests. And they call this musician mode because it basically turns off any noise cancellation, echo cancellation, things like that. Uh, and so uh, that is basically going to give you the uh, sort of original sound, if you like, coming through from your, your guest. But there is one extra little one here, which you may have noticed, which is allow private chat. And this means that you've now got, uh, and I know a lot of people have been waiting for this, <laughs> you've now got the ability to chat back and forth with your guest uh, behind the scenes, as it were. So I'll show you this in a moment, but basically it's going to bring up a second little chat window that is just for you and your guest. So uh, that is basically what the options are that you've got to uh, define your uh, different <laughs> settings for your interview mode. And so why is it that they have actually moved them into here out of the main preferences? Well, the reason is similarly to the way you have profiles in scenes, you've also got different options for interview settings. So for example, if you have multiple different shows and you want to have different little thumbnails or different little icons or different headers and different settings for your different shows, then you can just create a new interview settings uh, setup here. And so you can have multiple different setups. And that means that then when you are in your particular show, you can just toggle between the uh, the settings and use the ones that you want for that show. Now, we already have uh, pr uh, profiles now in the beta as we had in uh, beta one. So I'll will have left a link to that uh, video, by the way. I should have mentioned it at the beginning if you want to know everything that's in the uh, the first release uh, or the first beta. Uh, so uh, with profiles, these settings are uh, remembered from one profile to the next. So if you set everything all up for a specific profile and then you switch profiles, then it will remember you know which uh, settings to use for which. I think the easiest thing is if I give a little demonstration now. So I've got somebody waiting to join the call. Uh, so I'm going to dial in. I say someone waiting. It's just me. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I haven't got any real friends, you know, so uh, I have to rely on uh, a second computer. <laughs> so I'm going to add uh, add this and answer this call. So now, uh, basically, I can assign me to this side. There we go. Well, that's a terrible picture, isn't it? Don't know what's quite happened there. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so that is the, uh, the, the guest has joined. But what I really want to do is I want to go and... Uh, uh, go over to my other computer and I'm going to share my screen because what I want to show you is what it actually looks like from the guest side. So if I share my uh, screen like that, there we go. And I'm just going to add this into the call and I'll make that solo like that. There we go. So now I've got my picture in picture. I don't want that picture. I want this picture. There we go. <laughs> so this is basically what the uh, the guest's screen uh, looks like. And if I just take my border off for a moment, uh, what you can see is... Uh, now, this one thing that does not seem to be working quite as it should. <laughs> so I'm going full screen now. This might be a bit hard to uh, make out because it's repeating the image. In fact, what I shall do is if I... Uh, uh, no, forget that. <laughs> I was going to try and make it a bit clearer, but I don't think I can. This is basically the browser window that you're looking at now on the uh, the guest computer. And what you can see is there is a little uh, icon down in the bottom left, and it's not actually displaying. It was a moment ago, but it's not now. And that is basically where you add your little branded title. But what you can see at the top is that now the header of the tab uh, it says Take One Tech Live, which is how I defined it in the uh, interview mode. So let me, let me just come back here because there is one one other thing that I want to show you, which is uh, if you look down at the uh, the interview panel, so this is this one, so I'm moving around now, right at the bottom, we've now got this little chat window here, or little chat icon rather. So if I click on that, it's going to open up a new chat panel. And now if I send a message like that, <laughs> This has now sent a message over to the guest. And what you can see is there's a little chat panel opened up on the uh, the guest's computer over on the right hand side. And that now is sending that message uh, from the uh, or from me <laughs> to the guest. And what I want to do now is just actually type a little reply. 
there we go, I reply. And if I come back to my uh, desktop now, you can see that that has appeared in here. So nothing interesting there, nothing, nothing new there. It's just another chat window. And this is in addition to the main chat. So if you do have a chat window open for your show, uh, then this is actually a second one. And as you can see, it is titled uh, interview chat. So that is basically how that feature works. I'm just going to hang up on this guy now because he's becoming a little bit annoying. <laughs> there we go. So uh, that is the uh, interview mode and how those uh, features work. Now let's have a look at some of the, uh, the ones related to overlays because I think you're going to like those ones as well. So what I've done is I've created a new scene like this. And what I'm going to do now is show you what uh, you can now do with uh, camera overlays and image overlays and that is if I click on the little uh, sort of pencil icon to edit the shape uh, what we've got is we've got the same as before where you can select the camera and also the aspect ratio but we've now got this corner radius tool and what we can do is as if by magic add corner radiuses to our images now more than that though what we can also do is we can select which particular corners we want them added to because over here you can see we've got these little corners here and I can toggle those on and off. And what that looks like is now I've got corners just on two of the corners, three of the corners, one of the corners. <laughs> so that is how that works. So that is actually great because now you can really start to make some interesting uh, uh, overlays or you can basically make some scenes where you might not even need overlays. You could just do it all with background images or in uh, cases where you wanted... Um, uh, overlays where radiuses were an issue in the past you can actually solve those now with uh, just actually by changing the uh, the radius of the picture itself or by of the image itself uh, this is something that uh, if you wanted things with like large uh, radiuses but thin borders where they were overlapping another uh, say a screenshot or something like that it was often quite difficult to get those uh, to work so you had, did have some limitations whereas this has now uh, made it a lot more versatile but more than that they've also added not just not just a uh, the rounded corners they've also added a whole new shape and it's uh, it's not one they've invented necessarily but it is new for Ecamm Live and that is uh, before we had the aspect ratio either uh, wide classic square circle or tall or custom well now we've also got squircle <laughs> I know it is a word and squircles are basically uh, I suppose half square, half circle, but they're not really. What it is, is it's just a different way of uh, defining the radius of the corner. And basically there is a sort of longer radius start to the corner <laughs> and a longer radius exit to the corner. Uh, but then in the middle, it's sort of a slightly shorter radius. So it's basically like a compound curve is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and by having this, it does just give a more sort of aesthetically pleasing uh, look to the shape, uh, in, in my opinion and others' opinion, I believe as well. <laughs> and so you can just basically adjust that in the same way that you could with the, uh, the corner radius tool. So that is basically how you can add the extra shape. You can see it there that basically in this corner, that's kind of quite a sharp corner here but then it sort of flattens out as it uh, as it comes to uh, to the edge so that is another whole new shape and you could really make some interesting uh, sort of overlays or as I say you're not even using overlays just use some different uh, backdrops to uh, the uh, the scene and then just simply put these over the top of it would work just as well now there is uh, another thing as well which is that these uh, corner effects that we'd got be with uh, the the four corners actually now also apply to text overlays so if I just bring up some text overlays uh, I've got a few here <laughs> here we go uh, and there you go I've just shown you another little uh, feature that has been added in uh, and so basically now what we can do is with uh, text overlays you always could add corners to text overlays before but now you just have this option to be able to define which uh, specific corners they apply to. So that means you can make effects like this where I've got a rounded corner at the bottom here and a rounded corner at the bottom here. Uh, but then at the, uh, the, the middle one, there is no rounded corners. And here I've got the rounded corners at the top. So you can just make some uh, better looking, I think, <laughs> ways to sort of integrate text overlays. The other thing that I just sort of gave away there was uh, previously you could always have uh, text flying in from the left or right. So you'd edit the text and you could, instead of being fixed position, you could have it fly in from the left or fly in from the right. Well, now we've also got fly in from the bottom and the top as well. So uh, if I just come up to here, change this one from the bottom and then save that. And then if I hide all of these text overlays and activate them again, 
then there you go. They can come from all sides, basically. And that is the changes that they've made to text overlays and uh, the camera overlays as well. And by the way, that also applies to images as well. The other thing that is slightly different, if I just uh, come and add on a screen sharing uh, overlay, so that is the uh, the new new in the last beta <laughs> screen sharing overlay. So if I click on this one, uh, you can see the corners apply to that as well. So it remembers what the last overlay was. So I can toggle that off uh, and now it's perfectly square. But what you'll notice is it has actually uh, created the uh, uh, the thing, the, the thing, <laughs> the overlay to actually suit the aspect ratio of whatever it is you are sharing. So if I uh, select this one, uh, then it will be selected to that display. But if I had say an ultra wide display, or if I was on my uh, MacBook where it's not quite 1920 by 1080, but 1920 by uh, 1200, uh, then it just automatically defaults to that size. Whereas before you would end up with sort of letterboxing on it or columns down the side, depending on uh, bars down the side, depending on what size it was. So that is just another uh, thing that they have added in and that is almost it but there is a couple of other things here so there is one other that i've been using that you may not have noticed which is they've added a stream deck button to toggle between demo mode <laughs> and on and off and previously i was doing this with a uh, multi-action on stream deck where it switched to ecamm live and then basically toggled the short the keyboard shortcut well now it is just built in as a single action into the Stream Deck itself. So if I come back to this one in Ecamm Live in the menu down here, uh, basically you can see that there is somewhere down here, <laughs> they go live demo mode. So they've basically just added a an actual button for it. So that incidentally, if you're interested, is what my one looks like. So I can toggle this on and off with my Stream Deck. So that is uh, quite a useful feature. Um, there's not many others that I've got with multi-action. Uh, there's one for hiding the UI actually, which I leave. So I'll be uh, putting a feature request in for this. <laughs> so with uh, with uh, Ecamm Live, there is a, an option to hide the UI and that basically just hides the uh, the UI off the screen. Uh, from the, uh, the the main preview window. Uh, so that one I've got as a multi-action, but uh, yeah, if that one was a button as well, that would be quite useful. But I think that that is actually all of the uh, the ones that I use multi-actions for and everything else, they've slowly but surely added in the uh, buttons. So the next thing that we've got in the actual list of features um, is ad support for NDI tally and NDI Adds, sorry, support for NDI tally for NDI input and output. I'll be totally honest with you. I'm not entirely sure what that one is. <laughs> I'm guessing it relates to NDI and it's something to do with inputs and outputs. But that at the moment is the extent of my uh, expertise on that one. Uh, if that means something to you, then it will mean something to you. If it doesn't, then perhaps you don't need it. I'm not sure. <laughs> but we'll have to move swiftly on from that. Uh, so the next one is various fix... Uh, fixes various issues with screen share overlays. So if you're on the main version, you wouldn't have noticed this, but on the previous beta, there was a couple of issues with uh, screen sharing where if you've got green screen activated on the camera, then it would have some knock-on effects to the screen sharing overlays. But apart from that, uh, there was it was pretty, been pretty stable and I've been just using it all the time for these videos, but also for my virtual camera in Teams meetings and Zoom meetings and so on. Uh, and then it says a couple of other um, uh, minor fixes. So that is basically a roundup of it. But I think if you think of all of the features that were in the first beta and all the features that are in this beta, it really answered a lot of people's uh, questions and uh, requests for things that they uh, wanted and things that have come up uh, regularly in uh, in either the Facebook group or, or wherever of people saying they wish it could do this or that. So uh, really great uh, upgrade <laughs> to the, uh, the beta. As I say, if you're on the beta program, go into Ecamm Live Beta and uh, download the new version. Oh, there is one thing <laughs> that wasn't mentioned in there, but let's have a little look down here, shall we? Because they have actually updated the icon as well. So instead of the one that's kind of like a square frame like that, uh, they've got more of a sort of rounded frame, I suppose, similar to a lot of other apps have uh, in terms of the uh, the shape of it. So that is another minor change in case uh, in case you're interested in the icon itself. That is about all for now. If you have uh, been using the beta and got any uh, great little tips or feedback, then definitely go and leave them down in the comments below. And uh, while you're down there, of course, if you're not already, don't forget to like the channel and subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so that you get notified whenever I make any new videos. 
Uh, I will leave a link to my uh, Ecamm Live playlist with a load of other Ecamm Live related videos over on the bottom right. But until the next video, have an absolutely wonderful day.